Hey, I wanted to give a few more tips uh, or pitfalls to avoid when playing uh, the game of Carthage, a uh, GMT board game, and uh, it's on Siege Engines. And what I'd like to, again, I'm playing uh, this game longer than I was supposed to, um, but I'm finding out more things as I move along. And I found in the early stages of the game, you're normally either trying to raise fleets or troops, but um, I don't know, I just found it's very difficult to raise troops early on. You always seem to be, never have enough, especially from the Carthaginian side. So I never really was able to raise siege engines. Um, but now of all the things I've got going on here with Rome uh, invading Africa and putting pressure on Carthage, I find that Carthage now pretty much is always aggressive because uh, based on the rules, they're obviously nervous uh, and it's much easier to stay aggressive and uh, have four armies on the go and raise lots of troops as long as, as I mentioned before, your sources of allies and uh, mercenaries are not cut off by Rome taking military control of said provinces. So I'm finding now, and because you can only reinforce armies for the losses they had in the previous turn, sometimes when I roll and, you know, find out how many guys I'm actually eligible to get, I'm eligible for more than I can actually take because I can only reinforce up to the amount of troops I lost for each army on in the previous turn, which I think for the Carthaginians is, is a tough tough rule for them. Um, so I don't know if I'm doing this properly, but in the cases or the years where I'm eligible for more troops than I can legally take based on the rules, any extra ones I put towards getting a siege engine. So I am blessed now with having uh, armies with siege engines but uh, which is great because obviously that's good to help to reduce a city's IDS so you can make soften them up to make it easier to do an assault. And also um, doing an assault is just that much easier. Uh, you get some advantage by having a siege engine. However, what I didn't really realize because I never needed these rules is siege engines are really... Uh, they're very easy, they're hard to hold on to. So basically you can't take them through a marsh or a mountain hex, and you can't cross a river with them except by road. And if you try to use avoidance for a battle or a siege, you have to basically destroy the siege engine because you can't take it with you. So I guess you have time to uh, burn it or destroy it so that the opposite side can't get their hands on it. If you try to use coordination or interception, which I've been finding I'm doing a lot because I've got a lot more armies in play, you can't take the siege engine with you. You have to leave it behind. Um, and also a very important one, if you have a battle, a land battle, and you have a siege engine and you lose that battle, you basically eliminate the siege engine. So these things are really uh, difficult to to hang on to. So I had a situation here I'd mentioned, sorry, I hope I'm not too dizzy here. I had mentioned the last time where uh, Gizgo happened to have been where Bomokar is now. Oh, I gotta say too, I see a lot of guys doing these videos and they're picking up their guys with their fingertips and man, it's tough. So you gotta get nice, you gotta get nice tweezers, man. That's uh, the best. You can pick guys up, move them around. It's so easy. You can check who's under the stacks. Anyway, long story short. So I wanted to send Gizgo from here all the way up, as I'd mentioned, to beef up my garrisons uh, in Liguria and in Gaul. But Gizgo finally had a siege engine, but there was no way... I could get up there without having to cross a river. So I ended up having to leave the siege engine behind in Tabor here. Um, but that was okay because it was very close to other Carthaginian armies that I was hoping that could pick it up 
if Rome tried to grab it. So I had to leave the siege engine behind because of these rules, which I had maybe neglected years ago. Then the interesting thing is Rome... Oh, see, well, that's even with the tweezers, it can be bad. Anyway, uh, Rome was enemy occupied, means Carthage is in control of Rome. Um, and, but I had a lot of troops in there and I, it was the Roman army's turn. And so they snuck in and, uh, we're about to place Rome under siege. And now Rome, because it's not a port, you don't want to get caught with a lot of guys inside Rome because the attrition can be very costly. And in fact, after years of trying to assault Rome and siege it in different situations, Carthage was never able to take it by direct assault, by reducing the IDS and assaulting. However, one time I got caught in there with way too many Roman guys and the attrition was unbelievably high and Rome fell because of attrition. So you don't want to be caught. So suddenly I had a case where even though Carthage was controlled by, uh, sorry, Rome was controlled by Carthage, I didn't want to get uh, Balmacar, who's here now, caught inside Rome and he successfully avoided and decamped from the city where he is now. However, he had to destroy a siege engine. So another siege engine uh, lost. So very difficult to hang on to them. And I'm finding it's interesting that actually Rome may be uh, recaptured soon here unless uh, I do something. But I do have Hamilcar down here. So I may have to send him back up to see if I can beat off the Romans. But we'll see what happens. But again, these siege engines are, um, they're great to have. They're difficult to get because normally you need the troops. You'd rather get the troops than the siege engine. Then once you have the siege engine, they're very difficult to drag around the countryside, as I'm finding. And um, I hope I didn't break any rules earlier on when I sort of didn't really read up on the rules properly. So again, very interesting uh, what you can do and what you can't do with siege engines. They are very advantageous, but again, at this stage of uh, warfare, sieges were not really that efficient. It was more just waiting things out and by attrition. So the siege engines uh, give you a bit of an advantage, but not overwhelmingly so, but I still like to have them because they're cool. Siege engines and elephants, they're my favorites. Maybe another time we'll talk about elephants because I had a hard time trying to figure out how to get elephants into the game in Italy, but I think I found a legitimate way that do not uh, break the rules. And now I get elephants, the odd time, small amounts in uh, with some of the armies in, in Italy with Carthage. Okay, that's it for now. Take care.